what a day it's been today for the online beauty makeup fashion site Nika. It means heroine in Sanskrit and it really is the heroine of the day today listing at a nearly 89% above its offer price and joining me today is someone who's got every reason to celebrate the driving force behind Nika, Falguni Nair and uh, Ms. Nair, congratulations. And did you, did you expect this already uh, in the early morning trade it crossed 1 lakh crore market cap and uh, Bloomberg is now saying you're India's richest self-made woman billionaire. Thank you, uh, Sonia. I think uh, we are just trying to build a, a great company that is well loved by consumers and I think a good uh, uh, market reception is, uh, is, is very encouraging. So yes, I do agree that it calls for celebration sometime today. <laughs> it's, it's been, what a journey it's actually been. Is this something uh, you expected? I mean, the fantastic bit is that you're, it's also a woman-led unicorn. It's also one of the few profitable unicorns. It's really rewritten. So many of the stories we've seen around unicorns, IPOs, about women-led uh, businesses. What would you say today when you look at the journey that you've made to get here? I think um, I, you know, I, I, I had been an IPO banker and taken a lot of companies to the IPO and that gave me an excitement to want to start an entrepreneurial journey of my own. So today culminating in the IPO is a, is a fantastic feeling that, you know, uh, one has come um, so far and developed the maturity to be able to be a listed and traded player in, in the capital markets. Mm -hmm. And you said also today that you actually uh, decided to take this leap, this leap of faith as it were, uh, backed of course with your experience just before you turned uh, 50. So you would actually defied all stereotypes also to make it here. What's the biggest learning you have or the learning you'd like to share with all our viewers tonight who I think will now be looking up to you as a mentor role model? No, I think there is definitely a learning that age is no bar for sure. Uh, I hate uh, being uh, I, I, I hate to being counted as women entrepreneur or women this thing so but yes I think uh, one has to uh, break all stereotypes including gender stereotypes mm -hmm. so, so what do you think is your biggest learning I think the biggest learning is the power of technology I think when I started this journey I was embracing e-commerce and internet but I think the power of technology and its ability to do complex and uh, you know multiple tasks at scale and also very agile and uh, personalized uh, you know uh, personalized conversations with millions of customers simultaneously and I think all this has been big discoveries that I've really enjoyed uh, learning about and of course implementing it in our company. And uh, how do you think really because uh, how did the idea, you said that uh, of course that you had taken other companies to IPO but the fact that it was a need perhaps that uh, many may not have felt because you're so used to buying makeup from like you know just the store, the brand. How did you think this would translate into something which grew also so rapidly? It was interesting we saw Katrina Kef also at your listing today as one of your shareholders. What did you see as the opening in the market and what do you think really clicked and made it uh, take off? Uh, do you think the lockdown helped as well in terms of people just switching to online sites? I think in 2012 when I started the business, I think beauty was a very big business both in Asia like Japan and South Korea as well as Europe and US and somehow in India the beauty business was not taking off. There were adversities in terms of India as a li li large geographical country and in the nascent stage of the business it was hard to meet uh, the needs of such a large geographically diverse and uh, you know also ethnically diverse country uh, with what they like and I think like, I felt that with e-commerce uh, we can service this category much better and that's how we decided to set up a e vertical commerce company focused only on beauty. I also believe that uh, education was at the corner of uh, cornerstone of beauty consumption and for us to be able to grow the beauty consumption we needed to educate the customer and again digitally that is so po uh, very easily possible to educate customers uh, 
you know, at scale and, and through that education create demand for products. And I think Nika in many ways has created the beauty industry in the country. You may be aware that we have a, we own a brand jointly with Katrina Kev. Mm -hmm. It's called K-Beauty. It's a brand that we started together and she's been very instrumental in helping us build the brand. I mean, she's a joint owner and also she's been, she's conceptualized the brand and we are building it together. So I think she's a business partner to Nika and that's how she was here today. And uh, also, I think, also democratize it because now it doesn't matter where you are really. So did you find that interesting that the kind of different uh, demands or the needs, uh, what did it teach you about India and what, say, perhaps uh, beauty requirements or needs were or thoughts were? Because uh, the, what did this whole journey teach you? I think uh, Indian consumer, deep insight into Indian consumer and how they consume. And I think from early days, you know, I was looking at signs of whether consumer in Varanasi consumes different products than in Delhi and to our surprise, no. And even today we keep saying that when we look at data of tier 2 and tier 3 consumption, at least on our side, it is very similar to consumption in tier 1. So there is a similar aspirational consumer who wants to consume similar brands uh, even in smaller cities in the country. Mm -hmm. And I think learning about a much larger India of today beyond Bombay and Delhi has been the most fascinating learning for both me as well as Anshit and Advaita mm -hmm. who are with me in this business. And uh, you mentioned uh, uh, that you don't like labels, you don't want to be known necessarily as a woman, as a self-made woman billionaire or as uh, it's about, it's not about gender or beauty as such, you're a business person. But it remains the fact that this is usually an area and especially the startup area, we don't see so many uh, women business role models was it difficult for you at all did you have to battle any stereotypes or did you find it uh, a level playing field no i think i have been very uh, fortunate uh, whether it was uh, how i grew up as an equal in a family uh, you know where i think there was no difference between a boy and a girl in terms of the kind of commitment they needed to show for towards education or towards work uh, and I, I enjoyed similar support system uh, you know, all throughout, you know, from even my spouse, Sanjay. So I don't think in our home there is ever a conversation about, oh, women should not commit themselves to this. I think entrepreneurship is all about deep, deep commitment of time and energy and passion to something that you feel uh, so passionately about. And I think I've been fortunate to be able to pursue my journey without, uh, you know, without any judgment. And what's wonderful also in the startup world is that we see so many uh, people who are really first generation uh, business people and uh, suddenly billionaires. So in that sense, it's really an inspirational, aspirational um, uh, model for uh, India today and young people. Do you find young people coming up to you all the time? And uh, do you think that's actually nice that you don't have to, it doesn't matter what you're, that you're, whether you're from a business family or not to make billions today? Yeah, of course. I've always seen that a lot of young, uh, uh, young millennials, as I call them, or Gen Z, they are very passionate about uh, creating and building something. They are always looking at new ideas. And when I have conversations with them, I find it very exciting, both for them. They are learning from me, but I'm also equally learning from them. Right. And uh, of course, I would made this point also about the profitability. And the thing is that Nika is one of the few uh, unicorns and the IPOs currently, which is actually profitable. So you'll always have the experts or the uh, market experts will say, you know, be a little bit careful on unicorns because many of them are not in profit yet. You need to be looking at the numbers carefully. Do you think the fact the profitability of your, IP, uh, of your company is also given it an edge today in its IPO? Yeah, of course. I think it's not just about the profitability, but it's also because profitability is also be, uh, balanced between uh, growth and also, you know, uh, pace of growth vis-a-vis uh, -vis the kind of uh, unit economics you're generating from your existing business. I think Nika has been very um, frugal on capital uh, consumption and also it's been very respectful of the capital it has and uh, made, made it work long, uh, you know, go further. And I think that discipline of... Uh, chasing the right unit economic metrics and also trying to be frugal and um, you know very respectful of the capital that you have i think nika will continue on that journey mm -hmm. and there been so there's been so much hype about many blockbuster ipos and unicorns coming out and one of the tags i guess you'll have to get used to is amongst the world's richest uh, now as i said uh, uh, wealthiest uh, in india as well the 18th richest uh, family apparently the latest uh, bloomberg index 
what does that mean to you when you hear this tag of amongst the world's richest? I don't think anything changes. I think we'll remain the same. And uh, I think uh, we are a family that's very passionate about, uh, uh, you know, creating and building something. We, we respect hard work. We respect, I think what is important about NICA is great corporate governance. I think earlier today you must have seen our bankers and everybody will say that NICA has been a, a young company, but the corporate governance standards have been fantastic. I think we want to be very balanced on serving all the stakeholders in an equal manner. Mm -hmm. I think the new age companies have to show a different uh, way of functioning that where you are, I think today's generation expects you to have a much more measured and balanced growth approach and I think Nika is clearly going to value that and we also as a comp as a family are going to value that. Fantastic but I hope you're going to have a celebration tonight which would be extra special because this really is a well a one of a kind day. Uh, I think uh, we are planning to go for dinner to our favorite restaurant which happens to be at Four Seasons close to our home but yes <laughs> that's the plan. Okay wonderful well we wish you all the best as I said it's great to see this blockbuster listing and uh, congratulations for all the hard work that has gone into today we wish you the best thank you. Thank you thank you thank you very much uh, uh, Sonia.